What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. And in this video, we're gonna be doing something I never thought I would do. Take a look at the tech features on a Kia. But this isn't just any Kia, this is the Kia EV6. This isn't a review per se, so we're not gonna talk about all like the fine details of the design and things like that, but I just wanted to point out a few things and also mention that this is the GT line. So it's gonna have not only the performance benefits of it being a GT, but also a couple design accents. Now, oddly enough, this specific one that we're looking at doesn't have some of the things you see on other GTs, like the bright yellow brake calipers, some of the redesigns on the front grille, it's missing those things, but it does have the GT badging on the back, the spoiler, so it definitely is a GT, so maybe some of the other things are just package differences that this specific model doesn't have on it. But nonetheless, let's take a look at some of the awesome tech packed into the EV6. Now, starting on the outside of the vehicle, you have kind of a pro and a con here, and it's these self-presenting door handles. So if I were to walk away really far, and then I were to walk back within range, it's gonna detect the key fob, and it's gonna go ahead and unlock and present the handles to me. Now, these handles are really cool. I like self-presenting handles in good weather <laughs> during the summer, all these different types of things, because in the winter, when you have these self-presenting handles, they're gonna get frosted and frozen right over and they're gonna be hard to open. So it's a little bit of a con there. Also, the design of these isn't as good as what Tesla is, as you might expect, it just locked itself again. But you can use this little button as well to unlock it. Now, just like on the power folding side mirrors, you've got cameras underneath, you've got a camera facing forward, you have some sensors dotted around the front fascia, and you have a sensor down below at the lip area at the bottom. All of these cameras, including the one on the back, work together to create a 360 degree camera system. That's really, really cool. We'll take a look at it when we hop inside the vehicle. So it wouldn't be a complete tech review if I didn't talk about one of the coolest features and one of the most highly advertised features on the Kia. I'm sure you've seen the John Krasinski commercial talking about it. Look who's got smart pack. And I've taken a look at this on my 2022 Santa Fe video that I made probably a year or two ago, and that is the remote smart park assist. Now this works using the key fob to either move the vehicle forward or backwards using the built-in sensors around the vehicle. And it's really useful for exactly what the name indicates, parking assist. So what you're gonna wanna do is lock the car, press and hold the remote start button, wait until the lights flash, and you'll hear it start to whir up a little bit, since it is an EV, of course. And then you've got two buttons. You've got a forward button and a backwards button. You're just gonna press and hold them, and then boom, she just starts moving. Now, of course, you have to be within a certain range with the key fob, and as soon as you let off, it's gonna stop. And then if I wanted to back it back up, press and hold the backwards button. Gives you a little beeping indicator, like a forklift or something, and it's gonna back right up. The second I let off, it's going to stop moving. It also uses the built-in sensors around the back and front. If it detects an object in front of you, it's gonna automatically stop. So I'll use myself as a sacrificial lamb here. It's gonna stop automatically just like that since it detected me. And it flashes the lights letting you know there was an obstacle detected in front. No issues. Super safe, super simple and a pretty neat feature. The biggest downside really to the EV6 is just the battery capacity in general. You have a 77 kilowatt hour battery here, which is only gonna give you 200 miles of range. Starting at 61,000, I think you can easily find a Tesla in that range and you only get 200 miles of range. That's just not acceptable, even with the 570 horsepower that you have here on the GT trim. It's just not acceptable, but it does make up for it a little bit in the fact that you can plug this into DC fast charging. It will accept up to 350 kilowatt fast charging. You can charge to 80% in like 16 to 18 minutes. Absolutely nuts. So you do have some really, really fast charging options to you know combat that limited range, but still 200 miles, that's wild. So this is only the second time that I've ever sat in the Kia EV6. Honestly, the only time I've ever sat in any of the Kia Hyundai brand of EVs. So my experience is super fresh, super new. You all that have these or have been around them more often might not have the same reaction that I do, but I absolutely love the interiors of these. Some of the materials are not the best, but again, you're talking about a Kia, even at this price point, you're just not gonna get the most premium materials all the time, but the fit and finish makes up for that because it is top notch. Another thing I really like is that the climate control buttons are hidden by default. So you just see these two dials 
for adjusting and then just kind of a matte screen here. But if we go ahead and turn the vehicle on, it's gonna slide me forward a little bit and then you see the button shine through. You can turn these dials to increase the temperature for both driver and passenger. They're individually adjustable, so a dual climate control system. All of these are just touch capacitive buttons and they're extremely responsive. No haptic feedback, mind you, but extremely responsive. So you'll see this little icon right here that has uh, kind of like, like the sending the email button on top and then the fan at the bottom. So when it's on fan mode, that's when you have your climate control options. But if you hit the little you know arrow button up top, that's gonna switch over to your infotainment control. So you can get access to the map, the navigation, you know, tracks, uh, radio, media, setup, all that kind of stuff. It's all right there. And then you can use this dial over here to switch between you know, different features on that infotainment aspect of it. So it's a multifunction touch capacitive infotainment control system and HVAC control system. So intuitive, so smart. It takes up so little space but it's so effective in its use case. And I really like how responsive everything is. There's no lag. If you're going to have touch capacitive buttons, this should be the standard. But let's go ahead and move on up to what is by far the most eye-catching thing about the cabin here. And that is the dual 12.3 inch infotainment displays combining for a whopping 24 inches worth of a curved display here for your vehicle information. So you've got them split, of course, so one's more of like your digital display cluster and then one is more of your infotainment display cluster. The graphics, super high res, super high refresh rate, very smooth, navigating through the navigations, really nice, doing all of your driver control features over here, whether that is your safety systems, changing drive modes, using the adaptive cruise system and the lane centering options. Another feature I like that has been on Hyundai models and Kia models for a long time is the blind spot view camera when you use your turn signal. So if you go ahead and just click your turn signal to one side or the other, it's gonna populate one of the little you know, uh, digital gauges as a camera view so you can see if there's anyone in your blind spot right there. This should be standard on every vehicle. We have the technology people incorporated into your vehicles like Hyundai and Kia does. It is awesome. Now, as far as connectivity options go, of course, you have a Qi enabled wireless charging pad right here, which is a nice feature to have. They're never the best, you know, they're never the fastest charging options, but you do have USB A, USB C, uh, another USB C just for charging, and then a 12 volt outlet as well down below. Now, the one downside to having a charging pad right here, you would think, oh, this is awesome. I can just put my phone right here and then I can use Apple CarPlay and Android Auto right on this display and not have to have any wires. Well, you be wrong because they do not have wireless CarPlay and wireless Android Auto, which is absolutely crazy. Always been the weirdest thing to me, but it's just one of those things. So, but back to this display, you have some awesome features inside of this display. Of course, you have an entire EV menu, which is going to give you things like uh, scheduled charging times, climate control options. You can set your EV charge transfer level. You can find an EV charger near you. You can use your built-in navigation here with the mapping features. You can use phone, uh, voice memos, all the same stuff we've seen on other Hyundai vehicles and Kia vehicles before. You've got on-screen climate controls, uh, which works really, really well too. You just hit auto here. You can slide to adjust your temperature, sync it, anything you want to do. Of course, you've got Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, which again, I mentioned is not wireless, but you can plug in to use that. And of course, you have your camera menu. Now, this is what I mentioned outside. So you have a couple different views here. So on the standard camera, you can see kind of a trailer hitch view top down. You can see a standard kind of rear view camera mode, and then you can see kind of a split tire mode as well. So some nice features there. But really the highlight feature here is the kind of 360 walk around view. So if you press this second button down, it's gonna give you this almost like out of body, um, you know, top down third person perspective of your vehicle. And you can pivot around it any way you want to, which is absolutely awesome. And this works when the vehicle's in motion too. So if you're backing out of your driveway or something like that, I don't know if you wanna do it as much for safety reasons, but if you had a passenger, they could kind of pivot around the vehicle, make sure there's no, you know, toys, skateboards, bikes, anything like that around your vehicle that you might hit on your way out. Super cool for that. Maybe if you're in a city street and you want to, you know, see if there's any vehicles coming behind you, you can flip it around to this reverse angle. And then instead of trying to, you know, check your blind spot and do all this number and stuff, you could just see if vehicles are oncoming and you'd know when to turn out and not 
awesome, awesome feature. Every vehicle should have this. I think it's the coolest thing ever. And they already have the technology for it. Again, if you can have this top down 360 degree camera view, you can do the pivoting view. I'm gonna be making another video on the top five hidden features inside the Kia EV6, and we'll be mentioning this feature, so you get a little spoiler on that video, but uh, you can switch between light mode and dark mode, just like you can on most other technology these days, but I think the light mode is actually better looking than the dark mode, and I don't normally say that, but I absolutely love the graphics package here, especially on the digital display here. So when you switch through these drive modes, you get these really nice little accent pieces on some of the geometry that's on the screen. Especially if you go into sport mode, you get these little kind of gradient red accents that even have a little bit of noise on them, like some digital noise for added depth. And it uses this sort of new morphism UI design that I really, really like. It's one of my favorite kind of design languages right now. And they use it so well throughout this entire 24 inch curved display. I'm a huge fan. I'm completely geeking out as you guys can probably tell. And of course this wouldn't be a true Cars Tech review if we didn't take it for a test drive to try out some of the semi-autonomous driving features here on this Kia EV6. So let's switch over to the old iPhone and take it for a spin. So here it is. Go ahead and increase that miles per hour range, bump down that distance between vehicles so it'll speed me up a little bit slowing me way down there so I don't hit that car and it's going to speed me right back up and it is going to use it's kind of lane keeping lane centering whatever you want to call it everyone has different names for it but I took this video on my snapchat and it kept me very very close in these lanes around a pretty tight turn I was very impressed see how it handles this turn here Dang, dang, that's really good. It made me nervous, but it's good. Wow. You can see how it kind of turns the wheel a little bit to keep me in the center of the lane. Again, this car in front of me is slowing down. So it's gonna bring me just to a stop. I'm actually gonna go this way. But you can see those uh, blind spot cameras right there. Those work great. Another cool thing that I wanted to mention is that these little graphics on the sides here will actually increase in size and are different for each of the different driving modes, depending on how fast you're going, obviously. So if I speed up real quick, that bar increases in size. If I slow down, the bar decreases in size. If I come to a complete stop, it goes all the way down. If I switch over to sport mode, it switches from kind of more of a solid bar to these lines. And as I speed up, the lines get longer. And then when I'm letting off a region, you can see a blue line gets on there. As I'm slowing down to region, if I speed back up, the lines go the opposite way. Really, really nice attention to detail there. I love stuff like that. So thanks so much for watching, guys. I hope you enjoyed this kind of random edition of Cars Tech here, taking a look at the 2023 Kia EV6 GT. Drop a like on the video if you loved it. Tell me in the comments down below, what do you think about the EV6? Are you gonna pick one up? Do you already have one? What is your favorite feature? Let's have a conversation down in the comments. And don't forget to hit that subscribe button to be among the first to see every single new video the second I hit publish. We'll see you in the next one.